Today we're going to talk about moldboard plows. Moldboard plows aren't used nearly as much uh, as primary tillage as they once were. Uh, they still have practical application for many uses though, and those would include uh, seed corn production, corn on corn with high amounts of residue, um, sugar beet and potato soil density alleviation in, in front of those two crops, as well as uh, sod and hayfield management. The moldboard plow can operate in conditions much wetter than most other primary tillage tools and still do uh, a reasonable job. The plow has been demonized for burning out uh, organic matter in the soil. Um, the big reason for that is the multiple passes that are necessary to uh, work the soil in the spring after the plowing has been accomplished in the fall. I would argue that you're going to lose the same amount of organic matter through heavy disking or uh, deep ripping if you require the same number of tillage passes as in the spring. It's not so much the fall uh, tillage pass that's burning out the organic matter it is actually the spring uh, multiple passes that are that are doing it doing the damage the of course then the uh, issue becomes to do a very smooth and even job of plowing that requires very few spring tillage passes part of that is deciding how wide you want to have your furrows this particular machine is a uh, variable width and can uh, have the furrows set to uh, any width hydraulically the magic number is one third. So you need to plow a minimum of one third of your furrow width. So as an example, if this machine, uh, every farmer should have one of these when they're plowing, it's a must have tool of the trade. So say for instance, you are running an 18 inch width furrow, your minimum distance that you need to plow in depth is roughly one third or six inches deep. So therefore, if you wanna plow shallow, you need to have a narrower furrow in order to get a decent job that requires less passes in the spring. Another thing to consider is that uh, the plow has potential because it cuts uh, soil in a horizontal fashion to leave a plow sole or a plow pan. Uh, this has been talked about in great length as one of the negative features of a plow. There are a couple ways to alleviate that, however. Uh, one is if you are uh, tending to plow, say, on 18 inches as an 18 inch furrow, put a 16 inch share on it instead of a, an 18 inch share. And what happens is, is that this share will cut the first 16 and actually tear and rip the last two. So if it has potential to put a plow sole, it'll put the plow sole right here, and then the last two inches will rip and roll over, and if there's a place for the roots and the water to move back up and down through past the plow sole, it exists right there. The other thing we can do is control our depth of plowing. Um, as we discussed previously, uh, we can alter our depth of plowing depending on the amount of residue. And quite often, uh, plowing is not done as a yearly event, but as a part of a rotational tillage situation. Therefore, we're uh, plowing different crops uh, or, or uh, with different amounts of residue in different years. On a year that's required to do deep plowing, to incorporate a lot of residue, we plow it where it's needed to be able to digest. But in the other years, we change the depth of plowing. So if we plow, as an example, one year at five inches, we uh, take a log with us, we measure the five inches, we get out and we actually physically make sure we're plowing at five inches and not guessing at five inches and have a log on that field. And then the next time we come back, we could possibly plow at six inches or eight inches. Therefore, changing the place where the bottom of the share runs to give different spots and actually pull, pull out the previous plow pans or plow soles. A final thing to consider uh, when uh, trying to produce a nice, smooth, uh, finished plowing job is the speed of operation. Depth of plowing and the width of the furrow and soil type all play uh, a role in uh, trying to find the sweet spot for the, the speed at which you want to run. You'll need to play with it in each individual situation to see where the happy spot is to get a nice, even finish. In closing, there are situations where the positives of plowing can outweigh the negatives. And if you find yourself in those situations, think your way through how you're going to plow, what you're going to do to get the most positive results, and then go plowing with a clear conscience.